When I was 19, I had a malignant tumor in my bladder, but it's funny, stay with me. Uh, <laughs> because I'm a hypochondriac. And I think the funniest thing that can happen to a hypochondriac is that you get cancer because it confirms every fear you've ever had in your entire life. You're like, see, I told you. Remember last week when I was overtired and I thought I had rickets? I was probably right about that too. There's gonna be a lot of changes around here. It was less funny at the time. I remember I was... I was driving home for Christmas break. I went to school in Washington, D.C., and about halfway home, I stopped at a rest stop to pee. And I don't mean to be graphic, this is just what happened. There was blood in my pee, which I knew could mean like five things, and three of them mean I die, and the other two aren't exactly a trip to the Bahamas either. And it was particularly disappointing, because sometimes when I'm on road trips alone, I'll have water drinking contests with myself to see how clear I can make my pee. <laughs> Who's with me? And, uh, no, I will, I'll drink all this water. I'll stop at a urinal. It'll be clear. I'll be like, bingo, you know? And so when it was red, I was like, ah, oh, I lost big time. And no, I actually, I get very anxious. And when I get anxious, I get that shortness of breath. You know, that feeling where you feel like you can't breathe. And then you feel like you're going to die because breathing is one of the building blocks of living. And I... I get home around 1.30 in the morning and my dad is sitting up reading in his chair. He's a bit of an insomniac and I tell him what happened and he has a very grave look on his face because he's a doctor so he knows about the Bahamas. <laughs> and he takes me first thing in the morning to see a urologist. Now I didn't know at the time what urologists do. I mean, I'm 32 years old now, so a lot of my friends have gone for prostate exams and that kind of thing, but when I was 19, I was very naive. So when he said, put your hands on the table. <laughs> I was very confident that this would go pretty well. You know, I was just like, all right, I can put my hands here on the table. And then what happened was, was that he stuck his finger in the head. And I did not know that was about to happen. And so I shouted, I go, Oh my God! And he got mad at me. He was like, cut the theatrics! And I, I felt so bad. I was like, sorry about the theatrics, you know? It's, as though I had intended it. Like, this'll be my big moment. When he sticks his finger up my ass, I'll prove I should be the star of our town, you know? I don't know how you're supposed to react in that kind of a situation. Even if I were a robot, I'd be like, system error, oh my God. He goes, listen, Mike, you gotta come in tomorrow morning for what's called a cystoscopy. And doctors always dress this stuff up. He goes, it's no big deal. You come in, they put an IV in, you fall asleep, you wake up, you eat a muffin, you go home. All right, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So a little shaken up from that table thing, but uh, just out of curiosity, like what is a cystoscopy? And he picks up this rod that's about four feet long, and he says, there's a camera on the end of this, and we stick it through your urethra to look into your bladder. And I said, I feel like you glossed over a few details <laughs> in the initial description. I feel like there was too much emphasis on the muffin <laughs> and not enough emphasis on the fishing rod. <laughs> You're sticking into my number three body part on E's top 100 sexiest body parts. <laughs> Next morning I wake up and I feel like I can't breathe again. I go into the hospital and they put the IV in. They, they couldn't find a vein for a while, which is always fun, you know, just some stranger poking you with a needle and you have to take it like, ah, okay. Ah, okay. Eventually she found a vein. Apparently I have one and then I fell asleep, and then while I'm under, they found something with the scope. So they decide they're gonna keep me under and put me under further so that they can take it out. So they put me under the street equivalent 
of horse tranks. That's what the nurse told me later. And so I wake up in the recovery room and I'm sky high with my mom, which is not the first time in my life that I've been high with my mom. But it was the first time she knew. I don't react to drugs very well. I'm like the guy, if you're ever smoking pot in a group, who's like, do you guys hate me? <laughs> who's at the door? Who's at the door? Who's at the door? Why does my heart hurt? Is that rickets? You know, I'm not, I'm not proud of that. That's just what I am. And my voice gets very loud, and so I wake up in the recovery room. It's mostly elderly people, but in my mind, it's like a dance club. I was like, this place is awesome! We should come here all the time. I don't know why we didn't come sooner. Dad's always here. Because he's a doctor, you know, and my mother is mortified. She's like, shh. And I was like, shh. Do you hate me? A few hours later, she's driving me home and she has to explain what's happened. And she said, the doctors found something in your bladder. And talk about highs and lows. I was literally the highest I'd ever been. And then I was told I might die, which is like being handed a pizza and then being shot. <laughs> so I start crying. And because I'm crying, my mother's crying, because crying is a little bit like throwing up. It's a chain reaction. And we get home and... All you can do in these situations is wait. We had to wait a week for the biopsy to come back on the item they'd taken out with the scope. So for a week in my life, I thought I might die, which is an incredible experience if you ever have the chance because <laughs> what happens is you'll talk to God even if you're not sure there's a God. You'll just talk to anyone who might be available. You know, just, God, Allah, the elephant thing from Hinduism, uh, L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> Harry Potter, you know. I'm brand loyal to Jesus, but I'm not stubborn. <laughs> but when you think you're gonna die, you try anything. You go to start going to church a few times a week. You're like, load up the station wagon. We're going to pray for me again. And uh, a week goes by and the biopsy came back and it turned out I was very fortunate. They had taken out a malignant tumor from my bladder but they had caught it early enough so they didn't have to take any further action. Except every six months, as a precaution, they said I had to come back <laughs> for the fishing rod. But it was okay because afterwards I could eat a muffin. Well, 